Grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 13. And uh, I'm going to read from there so that we can hear and be what God would have us to be. Matthew chapter 13. Um, we want to talk to that this morning so we can hear um, from God. And down to verse 47 and verse 50. So I'll be sharing from there as we kind of talk on this morning. If you're there, let me hear you say amen. amen. Well, let me hear amen again. There's more of us in here. If you hear amen, amen. good, good, good. I challenge you to walk with your word uh, with me this morning. Let me pray and then um, I'll just share by way of introduction. Then we're going to read this thing so we can hear what God is saying to us this morning. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. We need preaching power this morning to be able to say what you would have us to say. So we've been dealing with all these parables in the book of Matthew chapter 13, and now we're at the end of one of the last ones in this chapter. So as we open our word this morning, I'm praying that you would speak through me to your people. We want to hear what you have to say, not what Felix has to say. So open our hearts to hear your word. Uh, to be all that you would have us to be. So we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen, amen. i got a few pictures I want to show you before we read this passage of Scripture to kind of set the foundation for uh, some of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you uh, this morning. And um, one is this, this first sign that I want you to see. When I first relocated to Denver uh, many, many years ago, um, I ran across a church that had that sign. And um, I, I had just relocated from Arizona, so my theology was not where it should be. And so when I saw it, I was a little bit um, troubled and a little bit concerned because I, I didn't know what the pastor was trying to communicate. But I think as I continue to grow in the ways of God, it made sense to me. Uh, it, it made a lot of sense, um, but, but it, was, it was challenging at first, and it took me a little bit to get used to it. And I've learned to fall in love with it. Can we bring this, this monitor down a little bit? I've learned to fall in love with it um, over, over the years, and I've seen others. Here's another one that, that I saw. Um, isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah, sinners wanted inquire within. That was, that was interesting. Then here, here's another one that I saw. Um, here's another one. Imperfect people, welcome here. You'll be in good company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we say that. We hear that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that we really understand what those statements mean and I don't know that we're really ready for what those statements mean. And I think today in this parable, Jesus is getting to the place where he's trying to really explain to his disciples what those statements mean. I have a habit where um, between Friday and Saturday, I post my big idea on Facebook. And I do it for several reasons. Number one is to kind of take the temperature of those of you and those in the world that's following me and those that are listening to me. And I normally get a good amount of feedback, some inbox stuff, get cussed out, get loved on, whatever the situation is. But I do this, I do this weekly just for my sake. Um, I pasted my big idea this weekend, and um, I knew it was going to be controversial. I knew it was controversial. And, um, and sure enough, um, my audience that responded was very, very controversial. For some reason, my big idea got the attention of the LGBT community, and they chimed in, and they really loved me. <laughs> yeah, and they really, really loved me. And I kind of sat back in my office chair and said, wow, what have I done? And <laughs> um, but then, but then it, 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 it reminded me of that slide, right? Uh, it reminded me of this slide. It reminded me of that. And then it also reminded me of this one where we're saying imperfect people are welcome here. You'll be in good company. 
So here is what my big idea said. Here's what it stated. My big idea was this. God's church will attract all kinds of people who should live together in unity. And then it says, separating good from bad is God's responsibility, not that of his church. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. I don't know that we're ready for that. They don't clap yet. I don't know that we're ready. I don't know. I don't know that we're ready for that. We say it. But that thing is heavy because um, I had some friends that were, you know, just out there. Um, and I'm calling them friends because they're acquaintances that I know that chimed in and, and, and just spoke their mind. And so I want us to kind of look at that because I think that's, that's the big idea of this parable that's in front of us this morning, that Jesus is trying to communicate that. And so I want to flesh that out with us a little bit. I want to um, get you to process with me. I won't be before you long. Just share some thoughts on what I believe the Word of God is saying. So look with me at, at Matthew chapter 13, verses uh, 47, and hear what Jesus now is saying to his audience as it relates to the kingdom of God. And keep in mind with me that Jesus just finished saying how the kingdom of God was like a treasure and like a pearl and when a person finds it, they relinquish everything they have to secure it. And so I want to say, before I even get into the message, there are people who will find that treasure that won't look like you, that won't behave like you, that won't function like you, but they still found a treasure. <laughs> are you with me? Are you with me? Let's read. Let's read. So I don't know how this going to go this morning. Let's read. It says here again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and it gathered fish of every kind. You guys have seen that? When it was full, men drew it to shore, ashore and sat down and separated the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fire furnace in that place where there will be weeping and there will be gnashing of teeth. The parable opens up, number one, in verse 47 by saying, again, the kingdom of heaven, it says, is like a net. Now, here's what I want you to understand about the kingdom of heaven. I said this last week. Let me just repeat it. At the risk of boring you, the kingdom of heaven is God's rule, God's reign in the earth and then in our lives. Okay, but first of all, in our lives and translate to the earth. So repeat out to me. Say, God's kingdom, God's kingdom. is God's rule, God's, rule. God's, reign God's reign in the earth, in the earth. Especially, in especially in my life. Come on, one more time. God's kingdom, God's kingdom. is God's rule. God's reign in the earth, especially in my life. In my, amen. Now, so let, let us walk through this. I want you to kind of to see. Um, I think they missed one of my slides here. I don't know if they have it. Maybe it is there. Okay, so we have that. Now, here's the second one I want you to see real quick. So the disciples then, number one, were called to be fishers of men. So if you look at this, it says here, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea. Now, you will remember with me, and I need you to back up to this verse. Go back to Matthew chapter 4, just back a couple of pages back. I need to show you these things so we can read it, so we can hear what it's saying. And Matthew chapter 4, down to verse 18, because I need to connect the dots so I can make the points that I need to make. Come on, if you, if you go to Gen or Revelation, you're in the wrong place. If you went to Malachi, you went too far. You guys it? Okay? So it's a couple of pages back. Okay, if you're there, say amen. Y'all talk to me. Come on, talk to me. Say it again. Now look at what it says here in verse 18 of chapter 4. It says, walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw how many brothers? Two brothers, and it names them Simon and Peter and Andrew. Um, uh, Simon called Peter and Andrew. His brothers casting, what were they casting? Where? Into the sea. And notice why. Because they were what? Fishermen. So he said to them, follow me, and I'm going to change your occupation and make you fishers of what? Men. That's a neutral gender term. I'm going to make you fishers of men. And immediately it says they left their what? Nets. And they followed him, and going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the sons of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, and they were mending what? 
And he said to them immediately, uh, he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they did what? Okay, go back to chapter 13. Let's, let's stay with this. Now, go back to chapter 13, and let's read. Okay? So, here what you, here's what you see. These guys used to be fisher of fish. They responded to the call of Jesus, and Jesus now says to them, I'm going to make you fishers of what? Fishers of what? Now, this is important. This is important. So now when we get to chapter 13, and, and you have to track with me, he had talked about the opening parable would let the wheat and the tares do what? Yeah, come on, y'all know this. I'm reviewing. Let them do what? Grow together. He even talked about a man who had planted in another parable um, good seed in his garden, but while he was asleep, the enemy came and planted what kind of seed? bad seed. And the, y- y'all know this right well, right? And one said, let me go pull it. He said, no, 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 let's work it out. And then he continues by saying the kingdom of heaven is like one who found a great pearl and a great treasure and gave up everything. And then now he uses an pre- a illustration from a previous occupation that the disciples had so that they would not miss the essence of what he was about to say to them, right? Notice how he begins. He says then, the kingdom of heaven is just like that net that you just used that when cast into the sea, it gathers of every kind. Now, here's what you need to know, and being in Colorado, you guys can't identify with this at all. Um, I grew up in, in, in an island where fishing was a big thing, and if you didn't fish, you didn't eat. My dad was a, he was a business guy, but as opposed to going to the grocery store to buy meat, he would wake us up at four in the morning to get in that boat with him and go out in the water, and we would do that thing that you just saw, you're seeing on the screen. We would fish. Sometimes we'd use the line. I was trying to get Bob to understand what real fishing is. It's not throwing a pole and wheeling it in and throwing it out. Now, we'd be out in the deep, and you have like six hooks on a line, and you drop that thing deep, and when you pull it up, you got fish on there. You kind of get what I'm saying. So sometimes that doesn't work fast enough. And so fishermen would use this thing that's called a sagne net uh, or a drag net. And the way the drag net would work, it would be this long net that sometimes would be attached to the shore or it'd be strung between two boats that were a great distance apart. And as you can see in the picture, the top of the net had these corks or, or floatable materials on the bottom, on the top of it, and then on the bottom of the net would be these weights. And this thing was no short little thing like this. It was something that could be on the top of the shore and go down quite a way. So we're talking a big net. Are you with me? Now, now here's what would happen. I need, I need y'all to get this illustration. I wish I had a rope or something up here. It's okay. So let me, Derek, let me go on that end down there. I'm going to just, just track with me, Okay. And, and pretend now that, that go way outside, outside of this real quick. Right here, right here, yeah, okay. Pretend now that you're the other boat, and um, I'm the boat on this end. And we've strung that net between us, and the net goes from the floor all the way to the ceiling, so we're really underwater right now, you know, yeah, but pretend we're up top. And we'll leave the worship team so they won't get caught, so we'll pray for them that they get saved, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, and now we're going to walk with our net, okay? So we're walking, and we're dragging our net. You kind of get what I'm saying? We're dragging our net. We're dragging our net. Come on, keep dragging it. We're dragging our net. We're dragging our net. I'm going to do this intentionally. We're dragging our net. You staying with me? And then you stay there now. Stay there. And I'm coming this way with my net. All right, it's okay to turn around and look at me unless you can see me on the screen. You kind of get what I'm saying. I'm coming this way with my net, and so when I reach where Derek is, my net is closed, okay? And then we take our boats together, and we walk that way, dragging the net. You kind of get what I'm saying. Everybody tracking with me, right? Okay. Uh, you can be sitting up. No, well, don't lose the fish, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So, so, guess who's caught in my net? All us. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. You got it. You got it. Y'all get, you get it real quick. And so here's what Jesus is saying, opening into the parable. And Lord, I hope I have time. Y'all just bear with us. Let me flesh this out, right? Uh, that, that who's caught in the net. So, here's the first thing. So, he says now, the kingdom of God is like this net that's cast into the world, not in the church. 
So that means if the net is cast into the world, that if it's going out there, it's going to drag all kinds. Come on, y'all. It's going gonna, it's gonna to catch some nightclubs. It's going to catch some hookah dens. It's going to catch some churches. It's going to catch some residences. Come on, y'all talk to me. It's going to catch all kinds of stuff. Anything that's in the way of the net while it's in the world will be caught where? In the net. Come on, are you talking about, you, you guys are tracking with me, right? So here's the thing that I want you to understand about this thing is that if the church now is supposed to be the responsible one of the gospel that's going to be proclaimed into the world, here's the first thing we need to understand. The church of God or the net cannot discriminate against the contents of the net. Oh, talk to me this morning. Yeah, yeah, it's going to get, it's going to get all kinds, oh, come on, talk to me, it's going to get all kinds of fish that's going to get caught up in the, fish, in the net. Let me go here, safe fish, unsafe fish, righteous fish, unrighteous fish, black sitting fish, come on, talk to me, all kinds of somebody, come on, talk to me this morning. If you're in the way of the net and the net passes your way, guess what's going to happen? You're liable to get caught. Oh, oh y'all don't, don't want to hear this this morning. You're liable to get caught in the net. The net cannot discriminate. So here's what the happens. It's like when the net is released, it doesn't see or nor does it care who is in the way. It will catch that thing. I remember vividly as a child that when we would pull that net on shore, we would have fish in it. We would have um, turtle in it. We would have sharks in it. Come on, we would have octopus in it. I wish y'all had lived this so you can see what I'm talking about. We'd have big fish, we'd have little fish, we'd have pretty fish, we'd have ugly fish, we'd have skinny fish, we've had, come on now, it doesn't discriminate. When the net is going, it doesn't say, move out of my way, I'm coming, I'm going to give you a chance to escape. You don't have choice, a choice, you get caught in the net. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I, and so here's what Jesus is saying to fishermen who could identify with what he's saying because they were the ones who at one point in time would be out there casting the net. So there, not only is the kingdom like a treasure, not only is it like a pearl, but it's like a net that's cast into the sea and whatever is in the way of the net will get caught in the net. Is this making sense, guys? Come on, say amen to me. Let me know that you at least know what I'm talking about. All right, very, very important that you not, not miss what I'm saying. So, so lock into this. So, so here's the thing I want y'all to understand. So the church then is called to live in unity with everyone, I'm going to cross some words, that's caught in the net. Visualize this with me. If you're in the net, the shark forgets that it's supposed to eat fish. Because he's trying to do what? Yeah, he's trying to survive and he's trying to fend for himself while in the net. Come on now. Big fish, the whole ecological system of how fishes function and how they eat and how they feed ceases to exist the moment, I wish I had somebody in here, the moment they get caught in the net, the whole thing about each one, man, you in here, I'm in here too. What we going to do? I don't know, but we got caught. And by virtue of the fact that they're in the net, they are forced to live together. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. You don't want to hear this. You don't want to hear this. Because here's what they're saying. They're forced to live harmoniously because the fight stops. It's not about the fight me against you or you against the other. It's now a fight for survival. I've got to live. I've got to survive. I've got to make it. I've got to fend for myself. And the reason I need to point this out is because you need to hear with me. In the net, there's no Republican fish and Democratic fish. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. You don't want to hear this. You don't want to hear this. In the net, there's no black fish and white fish. In the net, there's no Asian fish. Come on. Come on now. In, and, 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 and Caucasian fish. In the net, there is no Presbyterian and Unitarian fish. In the net, there's no Church of God and Christ and Baptist fish. Come on, y'all not hearing me. In, in the net, there's no non-denomination. Y'all not hearing me this morning. They're all forced to live together in unity in the net. 
Now, I know this is an extremely controversial statement, but in the net, there's going to be folk that don't look like you, folk that don't talk like you, folk that don't have the same lifestyles that you have. People that have committed abortion are going to be caught in the net. Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning. Men that like men are going to be caught in the net. Come on, women that like women. I know y'all don't like me right now, but if the net is cast, it's not going to say all the LGBT folk get out the way we come in or all the sick folk get out the way we come in. The net is going to catch you by virtue of the design of what the net is supposed to do. It this indiscriminately goes out and catches fish. Y'all don't like this. This is how Jesus ends this thing because he says, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> There's a whole lot of folk looking for a treasure. And they might not look like you. They might not behave like you. They might not function like you. They might not speak the same language you speak. Are you hearing me this morning? They not, might not have the same worship style that you have this morning. They, you know, uh, they, because you're a liar doesn't mean that you're not going to get caught by the net. Come on. Because you steal doesn't mean that you're not going to get caught by the net. Come on. Because you did prison before doesn't mean you're not going to get caught by the net. Come on. Because you have an alternative lifestyle doesn't mean that you're not going to get caught by the net. If the net goes out, it's going to catch you. I made the point. The net was not released over a single neighborhood. It was released over the world. Y'all know the scripture quite well. God so loved. Yeah, I don't need to go further than that. So, so, so the net, the net, the net, the net, it goes out and everyone in it is called to live in unity and I believe the same principle is true for the church. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. Because the church is a manifestation of the kingdom of God in the earth. You and I together, collectively, we form a piece of the kingdom of God. And if we form a piece of the kingdom of God as a local body, we too should function like the net. So let me give you what this looks like. So when I go fishing, because you don't look like me, I shouldn't roll up my net till I find someone who looks like me. Oh, I wish I had somebody. That's what we do. Come on, don't act like we don't. Because you don't speak the same way I do, because you don't behave the same way I do, doesn't mean that I roll up my net and pass over you. Any person I see. Any person I encounter, any person I engage in, they are a prime prospect to be caught in the net because of the indiscriminate, indiscriminate nature of the net. Are you hearing me, guys? Oh, come on, say amen. I know you don't know what to do with this, but just, just, just trust me and walk with this. This is why we do Wednesday night, so we can flesh this out a little bit, okay? Now, watch this one. Here's the, here's the thing that, that I need y'all to get me, to track with me so I can clean this up a little bit. So, so, while fishing, the church now is called to inform those within the confines of the net the requirements for kingdom living. So, so this is what that means in English. If you get caught in the net, here's how I'm going to say it. As long as the net is in the water and the fishermen are still fishing, kingdom subjects have an obligation to say, man, when they pull us to shore, they're going to separate. But it won't happen right now. So here's what you got to do if you want to get in the good basket. Come on, talk to me, y'all. But, but, but that doesn't happen when you get to shore. It happens while the net is still out. Oh, come on, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the end of the age. Jesus has not returned for his church yet. So while he has not returned and the net is still out in the world, we have an obligation to talk to each other so we can make, oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Come on now, we have an obligation. Go with me to Matthew. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Matthew 7. Let me show you this one. Matthew. Matthew 7. 
and jump down to verse 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Let's go here. Let me show you that one. Matthew 7. You guys doing all right? Might as well go ahead and say, Lord, forgive me. Yeah, because I know you done put some fish out. <laughs> I know I have. Maybe not y'all, but I know I have. I'm, beyond, I'm talking about me, amen? Uh, what you doing up in here? You know. <laughs> Let me move on. Yeah. Look at this, look at this, look at this. It says in verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who what? does the will of my Father who is where? Now this is going to jack you up, okay? This is going to really mess you up. So watch this. So on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Look at the next verse. Then, and then will I declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Go back to 22, because it's going to jack you up. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name or cast out demons in your name or do mighty works where? In your name. This is a very, very important statement because what that kind of implies to me is you're going to have folk in the net ministering that don't know Jesus like that. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Come on, come on. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all don't get that. Y'all didn't get that. You really did not get that. I'm telling you, you didn't. Because you're going to have folk doing things that have not yet said yes to God, but they're in the net. And the thing that gives them the credibility is not who they are, is the name that they... I wish I had <laughs> Because it ain't about them, it's about being caught in the kingdom, right? And if God could use a donkey to tell Balaam, move out the way... Oh, y'all not hearing me. Excuse the grammar, but he can use whosoever he wants to use to do whatsoever he wants done while the net is still out in the sea. Because his goal is whosoever will, let him come. Come on. He is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So you're going to have some unqualified folk ministering while in the net. You guys all right? Come on, say we all right, preacher. Say, this is difficult, but I'm still all right. Let, let's, be honest, let's be honest with ourselves, okay? So, so here's the thing. So we have a responsibility to preach the word while in the net. Now let me say this. So that means those of us who are called by the name of God should not compromise on the truth of the gospel when talking to people in the net. Come on, I want y'all to hear me. If there's liars in the net, we need to tell the liars you're a liar. Come on, but you're still in the net. Come on, if there's adulterers in the net, you ought to say you're an adulterer, but you're still in the net. I need y'all to hear me this morning. If there's whoremongers, you ought to say you're a whoremonger, but you're still in the net. If you're part of the LGBT community, we ought to say God don't tolerate that stuff, but you're still in the net, and you have an opportunity to turn it around and change it before the net makes it to shore. Hear me this morning. But here's what we do. They're caught in the net. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Y'all letting all kind of people up in here. Up in here, up in here. They just letting anything come up in there. They just put anything up in front of people. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know I do. Where she's sitting, she ain't right. I'm going to go over here because this is the holy section. It doesn't matter what section you're in. You're in the net together, baby. I want y'all to hear me. And we're called to live in unity while we're in the net. Are you hearing me this morning? We're called to live in unity. But those of us that know the word of God, you love them while they're in the net, but you still tell the truth of the gospel, but you keep your arms around them because you're caught in the net. Oh, is this making sense? Come on, y'all, let me know if this is making sense or not. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. Now look at this one, and then we're going to flesh this out. Lord, this thing, okay, good. Is that there? Yeah. So here's the thing. 
Separating people within the church, gosh, this is hard. It's not the responsibility of the church. I had to wrestle with that one. Yeah, I had to wrestle with that one. Let me read, let me read so I can help you all. Go to verse, go to verse, go to verse 48. I had to wrestle with that one. 1348, thank you. Yeah, that's a good Pentecostal fish right there. Yeah. That's how, that's how they do it in Pentecostal church. Y'all know. Y'all know that's how they do it. Then the fishermen holler, read! <laughs> Pentecostal fish get up. In the beginning, God said. Preacher holler, read on. Baptist folk don't know nothing about that. And Presbyterians, y'all sure don't indeed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this. Look at verse, look at verse 48. When it was full, not while it was still in the water empty, but when it was full, men drew it to shore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. Look at 49. Now he's interpreting the parable. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come out and do what? Separate, Separate the evil from the one righteous, and then throw them into the fiery furnace, into that place where they will be what? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Nowhere in this text do I see the church having the responsibility for determining who should stay in the net or not. Reflect with me on the wheat and the tear. Master, who planted these evil things? Well, the enemy did this while I was asleep. Okay, should we go take care of it now? No, leave them alone because in taking them out, you might take the good ones. Y'all remember this. So here's what you do. Let the wheat and the tares grow together. And in the end, not you, I will, come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on. I will do the separating. Now, this is very, very difficult because we want God's church to be righteous. We want God's church to be holy. We want God's church to be without spot or blemish. But here's the thing that Jesus says. I don't know that he's saying so much, I want my church to be that way, other than he's saying, I'm coming back for the church that is that way. Meaning, when he comes back, there's going to be blemished folk in the church. There's going to be tainted folk in the church. Those are going to be left. It's the righteous one. It's the clean one. It's the one without spot or blemish. Those are the ones that he's going to harvest first and throw the others away. But that's his job, not mine. Y'all, this is hard. This is hard because we holy. We're holy. Come on. We don't want nobody messing up our righteousness. <laughs> I've been praying all day long, and this unpraying fish going to sit next to me. <laughs> you know where that fish been last night? Get on that, ushers. And that's how we have some of our churches set up. We have a net within the net. And the second that blocks them at the door, that fish ain't dressed right. The dress is too short. Don't let him in. Oh, no, come on, come on. That fish right there, why he got his pants down here? Don't let him in. That one stink. Don't let him in. Or if you're going to let him in, put him in the corner way over there. Don't let him come. You never know what work God is doing to the fish in the net while they're caught in the net. Ask yourself this question. How many of us in here have been going to church a long, long, long time before we actually gave our lives to Christ? Are you with me? Let me go here. How many of us in the net still sinned while caught in the net? That ought to be everybody up in here, up in here, up in here. Are you with me? But you're still in the net. 
So we're in the net. It's a growth process. It's a transformation process. The Word of God, while we're in the kingdom, works on our, changes our heart, permeates our heart, such that by the time the net makes it to shore, we ought to be right with God. Come on, say amen this morning. I want you all to hear me. So, so, so separating people within the church is not the responsibility of the church. Our job is to feed them the Word. It is God who does. Are you with me? Come on. So here's how Peter, and, I mean, and Paul and, uh, put it, and Apollos put it in the book of Corinthians. I planted, Apollos watered, but it is what? So here's my job, plant and water, plant and water, plant and water, plant and water, not separate. Plant and water, plant and water, plant and water, not separate. Plant and water. And while I'm planting and watering and watering and planting, I love. Oh, this is some hard stuff. This is some, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Last one. So God at the end of the age will do the separating. And notice the perimeters of his separating. It is what? Within his church. So, there it is. The design of the net is to catch fish, yeah. And then when you get them in the net, you change them and clean them. And the problem with us is we try to clean fish we haven't caught yet and then clean them outside the net, then bring them in the net. What kind of foolishness is that? That's challenging because now I have to love the unloved. Now I have to love people I can't stand. Now I have to love people that have different sexual preferences than I do or political views or whatever, whatever the differentiating or delineating item is. I got to be like God. Come on, worship team. I got to be like God in the earth. I have to love whosoever will because we're all caught in the net and we have to live in unity while in the net. My prayer for this church is that, amen is that we love people like that. Love people like that. I'm not calling no names, and my son, Eddie, he always cautions me every time I preach. Um, he comes in my office Saturday night without fail, and he says to me, Daddy, be careful. Watch what you say. And knowing the content of the message today, he kind of said, be real careful, Dad. Um, Got to keep loving people. This is my 22-year-old. And today I was in Starbucks this morning. I'll be careful. And it was one of those types of fish in there. Y'all don't know what kind of fish I'm talking about. And I just said, she said, I do. <laughs> and I just said, Lord, help me love in spite of. That's my prayer. You kind of get what I'm saying? Help me love people like you love people. And I think if the church can love people like God's love people, this place to be packed. Every church in the state of Colorado or in the face of the earth will be packed if we stop judging and start loving. Because it's not our job to judge. It's his we're trapped in this booger together. We got to love each other. So here's what I want to do this morning. Stand to your feet. I want to do a reprise of that chorus, I Surrender All, that we just attempted. We'll work through it so we can get there. Because here's what I want us to do. I want, I want, I want, Pastor Derek asked me Wednesday night as you were fleshing the text out, Pastor, what does that look like to Surrender my all to God when I find the treasure. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? And we talked about it, giving him everything, our heart more importantly. Because this is the thing that will fool us in the thinking we are who we are not. So God, my prayer this morning is that we surrender it all to you. And if there's one here that don't know you, you draw them to a relationship with you so we can be more like you. Is that all right? 
So bow your heads with me. Father, in your name, as this altar is open, I am praying a prayer of repentance, beginning with me. Because I have not been fair with the fish that are caught in the net. I had my biases and presuppositions and preconception. And this word convicted me. People are people are people. Doesn't matter denomination, doesn't matter shape, doesn't matter ethnicity, doesn't matter color, doesn't matter choices, doesn't matter none of that stuff. People are people are people. And you love them, God. So God, I surrender my all. Forgive me first. And I'm praying that the congregation here would pray a prayer of forgiveness. Forgive us. Forgive us, God. And when we go out evangelistically, God, we just cast the net and let it catch fish. Let it catch fish. Let it catch fish, God. And we bring the fish in. And once they're in the net, let your word do the cleaning because you do the separating. So we give this to you, God, that you'd be glorified and have your way. So if there's one here that you're speaking to to say, man, you're in the net and you just realize that God loves you, draw them, God. Draw them to our relationship with you. Let them come. If there's those that just say, pray for me, let them come, God, as we give them to you. So thank you for what you're doing. You're a wonderful God. Thank you for this word, God. Sinners really are welcome here. But prepare our hearts to receive them for when they come. That we don't lose them because of us. Have your way, God. You're a wonderful God. You're a gracious God. And oh, how we bless you and magnify your name. We just give this all to you, God. We surrender it all. We give it all to you. In your name we pray.